You guys asked a ton of questions after last month's Q&A, so I'm going to answer them in this month's Q&A. Let's get going. Hey everybody, my name is Jimmy. Welcome to Coffee and Trains. Today I am drinking some caribou coffee. That's what I'm drinking in here. If you want to tell me what kind of coffee you are drinking and have it featured just like these guys right here, you can do that and maybe you'll see your comment in one of the comments below. Also, this is one of the this is the monthly Q&A that I do and if you want to have your question answered on next month's Q&A, I do try to answer every question. You can put that in the comments below. Cheers guys. Robert here 2708 says that he downloaded some files off of Thingiverse, but when they came in, they came in as object files and not STLs, and he wants to know if that will work. Now, if it's what I'm thinking it is, it's probably an OBJ file, and a lot of times that will work. Sometimes, I can't say 100%, but most of the time, the OBJ file will be able to be put into a slicer and made into a 3D print. AlcoLoco251 asked me how I figure out which decoder goes for which locomotive. Now, this is definitely more of an issue in InScale because of drop-in decoders versus HO scale has a lot more standardized plugs, even though InScale has some now. Um, basically, what I do typically is Digitrax has a great decoder finder on their website. It will tell you exactly what decoder, if it has the locomotive on there. Soundtrax also has a good guide for their decoders. Um, ESUs is okay. TCS is okay. I'm trying to think of who else makes decoders here in the States, but um, mainly when I'm looking, I look at like, if I'm looking for non-sound, I'll typically go with Digitrax and because they are just the easiest to find and they're very affordable. Um, but Digitrax and Soundtracks have the easiest guides on their websites for finding decoders. And then it's kind of a hit and miss with uh, companies like ESU and um and other ones like that. Bear470 asks about a used Bachman Spectrum Heavy Mountain that he bought that is DCC, and he wants to know if it's safe to run on DC. Now from the factory, he says the decoder is dual mode, which means it can run on DC and DCC, but he doesn't know if it's the original decoder. Well, the easiest way I know to do that is if you have JMRI set up, which there is a very affordable way to do that. I'll put a link to that video at the end. Um, you can just literally tell it to program a new decoder and do a decoder search and it'll tell you what that is. Um, other than that, I don't know anything else other than opening it up and taking a look and seeing if there's any markings on the board. Some decoder manufacturers put markings that are easy to see and some don't. So those are probably the best ways I can think to do it. David Sprague 6385 asks, can you use an in-scale decoder for an HO scale locomotive? So like for instance, he says if he has a small traction layout using HO scale trolleys, but he, they have narrow bodies. So it really depends on the decoder's maximum and what the uh, motor can draw from the decoder. Um, it really just depends on that, and you have to look at that. So typically, if you've got you know over an amp that the decoder can put out, it's going to be okay. Um, but I'm trying to think if I've ever used... Yeah, I have. I've used... Um, in scale decoders in HO scale locomotives. I've used like a DN123 or a DZ123. I actually use a DZ123 um, yeah, from Digitrax in HO scale. So yes, it is possible. I do know that some European models use like either Next18 or E24 connections. So that is, yeah, you can definitely use some in scale uh, decoders in HO scale locomotives. You just have to look at the amperage. Scavenger53 asks about something called scope creep when you're doing layout planning and execution and stopping yourself from heading down the rabbit hole and planning mega layouts that don't fit in your space or budget. Well, first of all, I've totally planned layouts that don't fit in my space or my budget. Sometimes it's just fun to do. But when you're talking about more achievable outcomes, sometimes it helps to look at the real world. This is where, when I recently had a discussion on proto lancing. This is another thing you can do. You can see what real railroads do because track costs money and a railroad is going to attempt to achieve a goal by putting down the least amount of track that it can that will do what they need to do at a specific location. So look at real world railroads for inspiration. Um, you can definitely hone down to certain areas. Like for instance, when I'm designing my next railroad, I was gonna do a whole huge short line, but I'm kind of narrowing it down to a certain part of that short line. So 
the real world is a great place to look for inspiration and then just measure and see what you feel comfortable with and figure out what your priorities are too. Because if you want more scenery, then you're probably going to have a little bit fewer industries. If you want more switching, you're definitely going to probably have a little bit less room for scenery. DB576 asked if I can make a video on what made you choose InScale. And that is a pretty good idea for a video. I may have to add that to my list over the next month or so. Um, because he says he's really torn between HO and InScale. The real difference comes between uh, size, because HO and InScale have pr come pretty close to to parity and being able to get a lot of things. Obviously, HO scale has way more support in the market, but InScale is not a slouch right now. InScale has has a lot of stuff, and it's been really coming up in there. So. Um, really, it just comes down to size and how much space you have, but I'll do a whole video on why I chose in scale. Wounds again ask, are there any small, solid, smooth running in scale, small steamers? And they're looking at something like an 040 or similar engines to kit bash into an HON 30. Well, there is a bit of an option. What I would do is look at something called motor bogies. Um, there's, these are basically just little motorized little trucks or bogies. Um, basically, it's a set of wheels and they have the motor in them. Tenshodo is a big brand with those. And I can't find it right now. I'm trying to look for it. But I did see an 040 chassis with the motor. And then you could basically just 3D print and put something in there. Um, or kit bash it on there. So um, that is probably look into motor bogies. If you keep searching, you'll probably find that 040 chassis. They have HO and N scale. Um, definitely just keep looking for that. Jeffrey Banks 9768 says that he is running O scale and he wants to get more space. He's thinking of breaking down a wall to get more space because everything on the table is so close together. What do you think of breaking down a wall for some more space? Well, first of all, clear it with the most important person. If you have a wife or a partner, clear that with them. Um, second, make sure you're not about to knock down a load bearing wall. Um, other than that, it is your house. And if you want to break down a wall for more space, go for it. Of course, I'm going to say go for it. I'm a model railroader. <laughs> North Mill 70 asks, he says he looks at the Tendi store where the DCC EX motor shield was is no longer supplying it. Are there any other suggestions in the US? Well, DCC EX does have their own store. I'll link it in the description below. And they do have it on pre-order. They also have the Wi-Fi shield on pre-order and it's a pretty reasonable price. It's uh, $13. So that is where I would look at it. That's the best option I can find right now. If you're looking to get going right now and you're not having to get that five amp load, I would just get an L298P motor shield uh, for now and then just work with that until the DCC EX motor shield comes out. UFO4X asks about using caulk on paint for securing track down uh, to extruded foam. And he's going to be using latex house paint, which is what I use for my base coats most of the time. And he asked, would the paint cause issue with the cork road bed sticking properly? Um, I don't think so. Um, I've never had that issue before, but I also do typically lay my road bed down and probably my track before I paint everything. So um, I really don't think so because usually you can also pull cork up pretty easy or pull uh, latex caulk stuffed up pretty easily. It's why I use it. So yeah, I think you'll be okay. Um, give it a shot um, and just let it dry overnight. That's the most important thing. So I would let your paint completely dry and then let your latex caulk that you've glued the cork down with completely dry and make sure you use those push pins or T-pins that you're using to secure the cork in place. Um, to hold it in there when you let it dry. UP5491 asks how they should hook up their accessory lighting to their layout. Now they're using uh, trailer wire connectors, which are four pin, and they're using the yellow and green wires on there as their bus wires, and they're not sure how to hook it up if they can use the brown or white wires uh, for uh, doing that as a separate wire. As far as I know, that shouldn't be an issue, but I would also just just make sure when you do it, um, I would do some testing beforehand, but using the brown and white wires for your accessories, I don't really see an issue because the connector is pretty simple. Um, and really anything weird would happen is if it was actually connected to a light for a tail light of a trailer. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't see an issue with that. Mike McCrory 4774 says that he is a G scale guy and he has one Proto Sound 3 MTH Challenger 
and uses the MTH DCS command and control. He has many LGB locomotives, diesel steam, and also USA trains. He said, is there any way to add controls to these engines to work with DCS? Well, DCS is a proprietary system to MTH. Now, there's ways to make it work with Lionel, which is a product that you use a lot with MTH. And as far as I can tell and everything that I really dug deep looking for this, I've only seen one person total that has made ProtoSound work on either USA or LGB, and it was a USA Trains, and I think they made ProtoSound 2 work, and everybody was amazed that it was done. So theoretically, yes, it can be done, but probably not going to be the easiest thing because it sounds like you're going to have to gut an engine to do it. Phoenix Knight 79 says that they're starting to collect HO scale locomotives for a railroad that they want to build, but they don't have the room for the layout at this time. Does it hurt the units not being used and just sitting around? Well, in the short term, no, it's not going to hurt them, especially if they're sealed up in packaging. It's not really doing anything, but if we're talking years um, you may want to just get some sort of little track out, a temporary track that you can run them and just get them because then you're going to get into the issues of lubrication drying out, maybe even dry rotting uh, traction tires and things like that. Uh, just some things that you might want to, you know, just kind of do. It's kind of like when you have a car and you got to do a few little things or at least run it once a week or or stuff like that for to keep using it or you turn it in the sun if it's been sitting out for a while in the summer so that the tires are evenly exposed or just things like that um just treat it like a car where you just need to run it occasionally if you know if nothing else just get you a nice little section of track that you can run it back and forth and make sure that everything is good to go battlefield division of norfolk southern it says that they have approximately 200 to 250 feet of ho scale track on a two level layout in a 10 by 20 space and it's currently all DC, but his wife purchased him the DCC EX system for me for Christmas. The most he'd be running is about six to eight locomotives at once. And that'd be probably two consists. He says, he says is one DCC EX system enough or should he do separate systems for two levels or should he add boosters? Well, it depends on what, first of all, I would definitely try to get the EX motor shield, um, that can go up to five amps, and that's probably going to do you okay. Um, but I do know that, and I'm going to talk about this later in the video, that DCC EX is also working on boosters, so that may be something to consider down the road once they get that going. But that's probably going to take a little bit to get going. So that is what I would say. Um, I think... I think that just the base DCC EX setup where you just have the two amp motor shield, that's definitely not going to work. Um, you'll definitely want the five amp um, EX motor shield shield. And I am think I'm going to try to figure out some of the other booster systems that people have gotten so I can show you guys as well. So that's what I would look at. I think Tam Valley also makes a booster that you could put on there if you needed it right now. Um, they also said that you also said that if you submitted photos for your layout and wondering if I had got them, yes, I've more than likely gotten them. I typically don't respond to those emails, just an FYI, guys. So, but um, I try to feature every one that I can. So, yeah, just Daryl Risley says that they have recently purchased a soundtracks 885022 Tsunami to TSU2200 EMD-2 diesel for his HO scale 280 Union Pacific locomotive. And he's not sure the brand since he bought it second hand. He says, what speakers would you recommend for this? Well, I would just check on the Soundtracks website and see what speakers that they have that they're selling right along with this because they do their own speaker sales as well. Uh, the other thing is I did notice that you said that you bought an EMD-2 decoder for that 280. So you may not have the right sounds for your 280 Union Pacific locomotive. So you may want to try and trade that out for one of their steam decoders because soundtracks, you can't change out the sounds. So the EMD-2 is going to have the EMD sounds on there. John Taylor 606A asks, is there any DCC power or non-powered slugs for N-Scale? Now for reference, this is what a slug is. And the place that I actually found some, I found some non-powered resin 3d printed ones on etsy um so believe it or not check out etsy for those because some people have made them they are non-powered but hey you could get some of those uh in scale motor bogies uh, those powered trucks and maybe make a powered version of it user ly2cf 
one vf six J. I'm just going to call you user. User says that they have two questions. How can they make their railroad more realistic? And how can they make running trains more complicated? Well, if we're talking about scenery, you just got to look at scenery in the real world and try to model off of it and work that way. And there's a whole, that's, that's a whole big thing that I can't go over in just one quick question. For railroad operations and all that kind of stuff, you just got to look at the way that the real world works in terms of railroads. I advise looking at rail fanning uh, YouTube channels. Um, those are are really really great for figuring out these without actually having to go out and check out all these railroads in person um, if you want to make things more complicated follow some of the rules that the railroads do make your own rules about speed about where you can sit cars down you know how long can you block a crossing rules can definitely make running trains more complicated without adding any additional cost jimmy school asks if i weigh my locomotives well for the most part no i don't the only time i think i weighed it is when i wanted to know how much uh, my Y6B was pulling and I weighed the locomotive just to figure it out because it is a die cast locomotive. But overall, no, I don't typically weigh my locomotives. Gartini asks if I own any Union Pacific locomotives. Well, yes, I do. I own four right now. I'm a primarily a Norfolk Southern modeler, but I do have four Union Pacifics. I have three big boys. I have the straight DC uh, Cotto big boy, and I just got the DCC and sound one because of a lot of things that I'll explain in a later video. And then I also have a Broadway limited big boy that's in a fantasy paint scheme. And I just got in this uh, Union Pacific Cotto uh, SD90 and big locomotive. Uh, this is on pre-order. This is their latest run of them. So uh, really nice locomotive. I like this. I'm going to put a decoder in it and uh, we'll be getting that going. But um, yeah, so those are the four that I have now. I think I'm going to be picking up a Challenger this year. And I think I have a Scale Trains Diesel in Union Pacific on order, uh, pre-order as well. So probably end up with six by the end of the year. Typically, if it's not uh, Norfolk Southern or CSX or something similar that's like a an old fallen flag of those two, um, I will typically buy Union Pacific if it was made in that. That's just my preference. Union Pacific is one that's just, it's kind of timeless because they haven't changed their stuff in a long time. Rich's Modeling Trains asked me what I'm using hot glue for. Well, the main thing that I use hot glue for is actually attaching little circuit boards and components to the baseboards of things like that. Uh, it's really great because it's an insulator and it'll hold it in place. I think I've only had one or two pieces fall off to where I had to re-glue them. That's what I use hot glue the most for. I also use it for securing wires in place as well. Like when I'm connecting up Arduinos, I'll put a little bead of hot glue along it because you can get the wires free, but it's also going to hold it in place. So that's mainly what I use hot glue for. Thomas French 2012 asked me, was it a car door that I hit my head on a while back? Yes, it was. I actually, it was just one of those dumb things where I turned and I just caught the corner of my car door and I instantly knew and it started bleeding pretty bad, but I just instantly knew because it was one of those thuds where it doesn't instantly hurt um, that I had done something and I put my hand up and I was like, okay, I need to go inside and get this cleaned up. Carlos Santiago asked me, he has NCE power cab and NCE switch cats for his turnouts, which are uh, stationary decoders for Kato turnouts. And he's building a bigger layout. And he's wondering if he knows if there's anything he can use for his turnout that's simple to use and less expensive than switch cats. Well, the cheapest thing you can do is you can do the Arduino and the L29N and motor driver, but you probably don't want to do that. So um, the cheapest thing I can find, and it looks like you can find this some places for about half the price of a SwitchCat, is a Digitrack stationary decoder called the DS51K1. Um, I found this on Train World for 16 bucks. Most time I found it for under 20 bucks at most of these. It's not as nice and neat as a switch cat. It's basically, it looks like any other decoder that they have with the, the tail of wires, but you basically, you hook up the red and black to your power bus, and then you hook up the, um, you hook up the orange and gray to your Kato turnouts. And then I think there's a couple other wires to hook up for programming, but that is the other one that I found easily that seems to be readily available. So uh, take a look at that and see if that'll work for you. New Age Link asked if I would consider doing a video on locomotive maintenance. And I have definitely thought about that. I just need to get a more comprehensive set of what I do for maintenance. I don't have a layout that runs like 
really long trains for really long time. It's not a huge layout. So maintenance, yes, I do it, but I do very light maintenance compared to some people. So I just want to do a little bit more and figure out a little bit more of what I need to do as my collection starts to age. Cliff Jones at 6924 ask if I found or used any good in scale end of train devices. Well, I haven't used this one, but this is the only one that I've seen that looks like the easiest one to add to any train, and that is the Firefly Fred end of train device. It's a flashing LED, and it looks like you replace the entire truck on a piece of rolling stock. So uh, that looks about the only one that I found that seems to be readily available. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Dale Collier says that they're working on a modern model layout and what he needs to know is about well cars, which are what carry shipping containers. And he needs to know if they still use 40 and 48 foot well cars. All he's been seeing is 53 foot cars. Well, I don't think there's 48 foot cars anymore, and I'm betting that a lot of them have just been modified and lengthened to be 53 foot well cars, but I definitely guarantee you there's still 40 foot cars out there because 40 foot is an international standard for a shipping container, so it makes perfect sense to keep 40 foot well cars around. So yes, you can use 40 foot, and then I would say 53 foot, but that 48 foot one has kind of gone away because the 53 foot container largely replaced the 48 foot container. So you're probably gonna either see 40 footers or 53 footers. Hugh Anderson asked if I looked at the Blue Nami decoder from Soundtracks. Yes, I have actually. I looked at it a little while back and I will post that video at the end of this video that you can check out. Blame Smoke Buffalo, New York says, do you have merch for sale like t-shirts? Yes, I do. They should be right below this video. If not, I have a spring store with various different shirts. Um, I can't quite get this one made. Um, this is a custom one but um, I got plenty of t-shirts. SBB Boyce says, hey Jimmy, as someone that is just getting into the hobby, they're asking questions about running two or plus locomotives simultaneously as in consisted together in the DCC. Well, there's basically a couple ways to do that. You can do that through giving them a consist address in addition to their individual address. Um, but what I do is I have DCC EX. I use engine driver on a cheap Android phone and it allows you to just add addresses to it and then just they're consistent and they run together and allows you to address the order and the facing. Um, if you have something like the Bachman easy command, what you do is you just program all the locomotives to the same address uh, since it only has like, I think 10 addresses that you can use. So that is how you do it with a Bachman easy command. But if you're using something like engine driver, you can just put multiple locomotives together just by keep adding them to it. Mickey Hill 88 asked about, they upgraded from DCC plus plus to DCC EX and was asking about, should they add more power districts to their planned expansion and help them to understand stacking motor boards? Well, I have not done a motor board stacking yet. I think I have it on my list of things to try. So one thing though that you should know is that DCCEX and Paul from the DCCEX team actually commented on a comment in this uh, on this on the previous video and said that DCCEX has a booster mode coming and more hardware too. And they actually have a prototype with eight different power districts. So just keep an eye on what DCCEX is doing. You can follow on their website, dccex.com. The Canadian Redneck Farm asked if I scratch build any of my buildings. Well, I've actually 3D printed a lot of my buildings. Almost my entire town up there is 3D printed. The building in front of my yard is 3D printed. Um, and the chemical plant is entirely 3D printed. So I that's how I scratch build. I typically do that. Um, I do a lot of 3D printing for that. I think that's the, the new scratch build. Kivo05S asks, what do you do if you get into a rut and you can't find any inspiration for your own layout? Well, there's a couple things you can do. You can just switch to a different project because we all know that model railroads all have more than one project going on at the same time. But if you really get into a rut, just take a step back. I've had to do that where I didn't run trains for a couple weeks. Um, but yeah, just take a step back or uh, work on a different project on the model railroad. Um, if you're getting in a rut in scenery, try doing something with electrical or, you know, tuning your DCC locomotives to run better, things like that. Um, just 
do something different, or just take a step back. If you have a question that you would like answered on a monthly Q&A, you can do that by leaving a comment on this video. I do try to get to every question. Sometimes I don't get to every single question, but I do try to get to as many of them as I can. So just leave that comment on this video and Next month, you'll probably see your question answered. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.